Hello, and welcome to the first of two nights of some very special films. None of the animated films we're going to show could have been made for the commercial cinema, unless the filmmakers had saved up a lot of their pennies from doing commercial work and then sat down to make one of their own movies. But these films are all made from Canadian government money, and animation is a very expensive medium. The National Film Board of Canada is the only place in the so-called free world where these films could have been made. This is because at the beginning of the Second World War, John Grierson, the great Scots documentary film producer, had the ear of Mackenzie King, the Canadian Prime Minister, and Grierson got Mackenzie King to write such an amazingly open charter for the Canadian Film Board. You could make anything, from short public service films about how smoking causes forest fires or loose talk sinks ships, to educational films, right through to pure art or visual poetry. All this paid for by the Canadian taxpayer. Another thing about the film board is that they distribute their products worldwide. So not only does the animator not have to get his money to make the film through the commercial world, but when his work is completed, it reaches all parts of the world through the film board's excellent distribution system. Neither of tonight's films are animated films in the usual sense. The Germans call animated films trick films, trick films which is a very good description of what you're about to see. The first film we're showing is Night Angel, where the Canadian Film Board collaborated with the... The second film tonight is by Norman McLaren, the most famous of the Canadian animators. Norman won over a hundred international awards. Norman covered the widest range of experimentation, I think, of any animator who ever lived. Nothing he ever did was like anything else he ever did. I always figured Norman was a kind of visual scientist. He did everything for its own sake, on its own terms. He drew the noises on soundtracks, he painted directly on film stock, he scratched into the negative so no camera was used, he sandpapered the film, he pioneered all manner of strange new photographic techniques. He also made a very famous Oscar-winning anti-war film called Neighbors, using pixelation for the first time, where you film people acting frame by frame in stop motion so that they move like drawn cartoons. Norman developed the use of very short dissolves, a tool to increase the beauty of animation. Now, I'd done a lot of work with close dissolves, and Norman told me about an experiment 20 years ago he did with an eye moving, which gave me the clue to develop a whole area of my own art. He said he had a, a Greek, sort of white Greek statue head with an eye looking this way, and he just dissolved the eye from here to looking at you here, just two drawings. And he said it was amazing, very lifelike look, and, and it worked. And so that was a clue for me to get into a sort of whole area of beauty animation. Anyway, I can't imagine Norman McLaren being able to afford to do any of his work without the unique support of the Film Board of Canada. In this film, Pas de Deux, he photographed ballet dancers in a black and white visual poem where he ends up printing overlaid multiple images with startling results. Hello and welcome to our second evening of animation from the National Film Board of Canada. Tonight's first animated film is a Hollywood Oscar winner. Made by John Weldon and Eunice McCauley, Special Delivery is a kind of animated comic strip telling a definite story. It all starts when a man refuses his wife's command to shovel the snow off his front walk. And what happens could never be allowed in the commercial cinema. Dead male nudity, for example. And it's only the broad basis of the Canadian Film Board's charter that enables such an off-the-wall and bizarre cartoon to be made. It's been drawn quite small in a handwritten style, and the whole thing has the feeling of a shaggy dog story, as if in a letter written to a friend. And it was made for the Canadian Postal Services, if you can believe that. Next is a wacky animated film by Richard Condy. It's called The Big Snit. He has two conflicts going on. One is global nuclear war, and the other is a domestic quarrel between a man and his wife. Like a lot of Canadian film board movies, you have to interpret this for yourself. But it's very funnily designed, and I love the sudden bursts of fast action. He has very good timing. Right. 
Our last film is very different from the first two. It's by an East Indian artist living in Canada, Ishu Patel. He has some extremely startling and beautiful visual effects, oriental in feeling. He's tried for great visual beauty of a kind you'd never see in the commercial cinema. And he's combined various known animation techniques in such a way so that in places he's come up with results never seen before. It's quite easy to do funny stuff, but tackling beauty in animation is another thing altogether.